The woman was trying to sell her two children for crap. David was like, girl, I'm bad, but I ain't that bad. Well, hello there, love bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Today's looky looky would be our Gold Coast Wooden Bangle Bundle. I only have two sets outside of the set that I have. So if you like it, go on over there and check it out. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. Now, let's continue to talk about, ooh, TT's Deliver Us From Temptation, the tragic and shocking story of the Temptations and Motown. David had not shown up for the previous two performances in Madison, Wisconsin. And when he didn't show in Milwaukee, we wondered what we were going to tell the Four Tops because we knew that they were booked for a huge tour of 40 or so cities. And we knew that they were considering taking us on the road with them. In fact, from what we had heard, there was an 80-20 chance that we would get the job instead of Otis's temptations. Once again, the competition was fierce. Around 4 o'clock, the four top showed up, and luckily they gave us no time to make excuses for David. The first thing the lead singer, Levi Stubbs, said was, We know David's not here. How do you know? Dennis asked. Because we just seen his ass in Detroit. We were in our limo coming through the city on our way to the airport and we saw him scrambling for crack on the corner. We think he was selling his Rolex. We had the driver pull over and we said, David, come on, what are you doing? You've got a show to do tonight. He told us, oh, I'll be there. Go on, I'll be there later. Tony's gonna get me a ticket. Well, we told him to fly out with us. We told him we could get him a ticket and everything, but he wouldn't come with us. So you know what Levi's saying. Levi's like, I don't have time to be playing around with this nigga. Eddie, you can babysit this nigga, but we ain't fitting to babysit him. We get ready to go out on this huge tour and we getting y'all, we want y'all to be the opening act for us. Not Otis's group, we want you. And look at David around right here selling his Rolex for crap. Is he crazy? They knew David as well as we did and they knew he would never make it. Eddie and Dennis went on and performed by themselves, opening the night's concert for the Four Tops. And the Tops took Otis's Temptations on tour with them. That's right. I mean, uh, okay, okay, right. So, you know, people have their thoughts about Otis. I mean, Otis okay with me with his horse-ish horse horse -ish self. But, I mean, it's the business. He had that business down pat. Eddie was trying to be that guy, and I think he was, you know, reaching to be like an Otis in regards to the former attempts, but I think he was a more loyal person than to just throw away people the way that Otis did, you know. But if I was the Four Tops and I was Levi Stubbs, I would be like, I don't want to be bothered. I need my money to be right. And I don't want nobody taking from my money because David out here running around on a crack tour. So, I mean, I don't blame him. It was the last straw for Eddie Kendrick. Though he never said anything at the time, he just clammed up. Next thing we knew, David was out of the group. This is how it happened. David received a call in Philadelphia from the management company telling him he was fired. Later on that day, I was standing nearby while the Four Tops tour bus was being loaded when I noticed in the luggage compartment several crates of cough medicine. I was intrigued. Uh, they got a lot of cough medicine on that bus. 
I commented to Dennis later. They're hooked on that brother tussing, he joked. That's why they're so mellow. It's a cheap high. Ooh, 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 y'all. So all these people out here drinking that lean. Ooh, my good, my goodness. Child, they've been doing that lean a long while. You know who else was on that? Um, Bobby DeBarge. That's when I found out that that was a high for people. When I was watching the Bobby DeBarge movie on TV One. Child, that thing was a mess. But I was like, damn. Bobby didn't gave up heroin for Robitussin? Or Tussin? That's what they call it, Tussin. Our next engagement was in April at Sweetwater's, a lively New York soul club. In place of David, Eddie had decided to add another singer to the background, a great undiscovered soloist by the name of David C. Although David Ruffin was not with us, his girlfriend Diane had driven up from Philadelphia for the show. She said David was doing fine. He was gaining weight and sleeping a lot, building up his strength so that he could get started on some songwriting and maybe even some recording. Eddie, she said, you should hear him. He sounds great. But Eddie was not about to take David back. In fact, as I discovered later, when I went to get my pay, we were both out in the cold. The guys are trying to cut back, Judas told me. As you know, Tony, they don't have much work coming in now that we don't have roughing with us anymore. And you know he was supposed to be your responsibility. Also, their pay's been cut almost in half. So the guys say they can't keep you on the road anymore. You're fired. Mm, 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 mm. You better get your godfather. As time went by, David's old weaknesses began to creep back upon him. Diane would let him take her car out and he would disappear. Oh my gosh, when you be in love, oh, when you be in love with an addict, it's like you become the handler, you know what I'm saying? And you love him so much that you allow him to do whatever to you just so that when it's good with you, it's really good, you know? But when it's bad, it's bad. But you just want those moments where he's good and sober and clean and loving. You aspire for those. So you tolerate the bullshit in order to have those sporadic moments of beauty. As time went by, David's old weaknesses began to creep back upon him. Diane would let him take her car out and he would disappear. She would go out into the night, find a cab, roam the back streets of Philly till she found him in some hellhole and take him back home. One night, Diane got a call from the police. Do you know a Mr. David Ruffin? He claims he's a temptation. Yes, she told them. And he is most definitely David Ruffin of the Temptations. Well, we have a 14 year old down here that has your Lincoln Continental and a signed piece of paper saying he bought it from a Mr. David Ruffin for $20. David had traded the Lincoln for $20 worth of crack. Diane went and retrieved her car, begging the police to keep the story out of the papers. The story reminded me of another unorthodox trade David had once made. Child, so anyway, David out there doing his thing, right? He came across a woman who was also a crackhead, right? The woman was trying to sell her two children for crack. David was like, girl, I'm bad, but I ain't that damn bad. So she's like, look. I mean, this all I got is these kids. And right now I'm chasing crack, not motherhood, right? I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm just being realistic, right? So David took it upon himself to bring these two children back to the farm. He had a great time playing pop for about a week. And then he managed to track down the kid's aunt and turn them over to her. Good job, David. David by now weighed a little over 100 pounds. He was like a walking skeleton. And Diane began to talk about trying to commit him to a drug program where he could spend at least two years straightening out. But he would not go into treatment voluntarily. Around August, I came up with a solo booking for David performing for the 10th anniversary of a big law firm in Florida. We were billing him as 
David Ruffin, the voice of The Temptations. Okay. Eddie and Dennis's band had already agreed to work with him on any engagements I came up with. And since jobs had been sketchy for the former temps, since David had been thrown out, there wasn't much risk of double booking. As God would have it, between that time and November, everything changed. Eddie and Dennis got a major three-week booking at the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas. As they left for the engagement, they discovered that Nate Evans, one of the background singers, suddenly couldn't make the engagement for personal reasons. Eddie panicked. He went completely hysterical. The lineup was suddenly one person short. It won't work. It won't work, Eddie kept on saying. No one could figure out why it wouldn't work. Maybe it had suddenly occurred to Eddie that he was about to do three weeks at the Sands Hotel and he had no David, no voice of the temptations to give the group its strength after all. Eddie decided to call Diane in Philadelphia and tell her to put David on the very next flight to Vegas. Diane, you know Diane. Diane, the one who occasionally gets her car stolen by the David Ruffin. David rushed off to Vegas. He was back in the group. Three days later, Nate got his whole situation cleared up. It had all been a big misunderstanding. And then there was six. David had been out of the group for about eight months when Eddie panicked about Vegas and took him back again. Bookings had dried up considerably without David Ruffin because he was seen by most promoters as the group's main draw. Just like I would say, you know, Bobby Brown would be New Edition's main draw, unfortunately. I think it's just the risk of whether or not he going to be there. You know, like in some ways, I guess we're all risk takers. Like, you know, when you buy a Cat Williams ticket to one of his comedy shows, because they said that nigga always be no showing. But I think he clean and sober now. And have y'all seen his uh, Netflix a comedy show. They said it was bad. It was good to me. Eddie had been showing signs of strain. It couldn't have felt too good to him or his ego to be so dependent on David for getting work. He was in danger of becoming another Otis. Told y'all. Told y'all. He wasn't in danger of becoming another Otis. He was becoming another Otis. It was just, he was just more loyal. And Otis is a Scorpio. That's different. You know, if Scorpio's Ain't nothing but evil. They're loyal. Once they trust you. Of course, Eddie always took David back. David had been back with the group a month or so when he called me at my home in Florida. Tony, we're coming down to Tampa. What's happening in Tampa, Florida, baby boy? Really? I said, you're doing a show down here? We're doing the Super Bowl, he told me. We're doing the Super Bowl halftime show with new kids on the block. They had beaten out Otis's temptations for the job, and he was very excited. I pointed out that being a road manager was a hard job for someone with very little experience, and given that David, Eddie, and Dennis were three stars who were used to functioning individuals, they really needed a well-rounded personal assistant each, plus one well-trained head road manager. Well, David told me, I think you should come back to work exclusively for Dennis and myself as our personal assistant. Now, let me tell you, remember the guy, TT, that would be Tony Turner. Tony Turner is a um, real estate agent that does very well. And he is now living in Florida in one of his, you know, elaborate homes. And I got a commenter that told me that... Um, T.T. is still doing quite well. Eddie, David, and Dennis, the three stooges, as I would started calling them, were arriving about four days ahead of time for intensive rehearsals. They would be staying on exclusive Trendy Harbor Island where they were booked for two free outdoor concerts on a barge the day before the Super Bowl Sunday. Everything looked good. Then the Gulf War broke out. All of a sudden, with crises in the Middle East, the Super Bowl didn't look like such a sure thing anymore. Everybody started talking about the security risk, terrorist threats, 
maybe Tampa Stadium would be a target. Ooh, believe this or not, there was a time that America believed that they were untouchable. Okay, and they had the population believing that we were untouchable. No, 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 no. We fight wars on your ground. We don't bring that negative down here to the America. Uh, uh. When we want to fight, we gets busy over there. So, when the nine eleven thing happened, it shook all of us because America had us believing that we were untouchable. The word started to spread around Tampa like a cancer. They might cancel the Super Bowl. Suddenly, the whole city shifted to high security alert. The game would go on. The temps began arriving in Tampa on Wednesday. Remember to like, share the Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com for these gold hand-painted by me wood bangles. Now remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves you babies. Have a good one.